Okay, now let's see a technique to equalize the overhead microphones. These are microphones that a lot of people believe that they are for the cymbals. But as a matter of fact, they don't capture the cymbals only, but the whole drum kit. So for example, let's hear this part. Here I have some drums and the overhead microphones. And together they sound like this. Okay, but now if I listen to the overheads only, we can hear that the snare comes uh, there too. So this is a very important concept. The overhead microphones also include all the drums. So they are important for the snare, the clarity of the snare, the clarity of the tom-toms, and in general, the spaciousness of the drum kit. So take that in count. Now, as we know, we have to hear first and listen carefully. Okay. Very well. The first thing we usually do is to clean up the track. So I'm going to use this uh, digital equalizer to analyze the frequencies here. And we can see that the microphones capture a kind of a little low end and of course high end on the right. And the sound is not bad, actually it sounds pretty good. This is another important point. Remember that the quality of your sound depends in the first place on the quality of your cymbals in this case. So, these are good cymbals, they are a, a good instrument and they sound pretty good without any microphone because there are many cymbals that hurt your ear if you play them, but in this case these cymbals sound good even in, in life without any microphone. And that's a very important point. You must try to use always the highest quality instruments that you can get then the sound quality also depends on the quality of the musician. The drummer should be skilled enough to take a nice sound out of the drum kit. So that's a matter of experience and skills, of course. And finally, the microphones also play an important part in this regard. So we have the cymbals. They sound good, but I can hear some kind of little annoying frequency uh, around the mid-range. The first thing we usually do is to apply a high pass filter. In this case it's uh, 12 dB per octave, that means it's a second order filter. So let's hear and see how much do we need to cut. This would be too much for example. It sounds artificial, so I don't want that. I think this gives us a more natural sound. It reduces the rumble, but it keeps a natural cymbal sound. Yeah, that's, uh, that's better. Now, the next part, I'm hearing this little harshness. So we know that harshness comes between 2K and 4K, so I need to apply an EQ here a little narrower, and I'm going to make a sweeping. Maybe this is the frequency, let's see. Not that much actually. Okay, here it is. It's around 2.5 kilohertz. I find this frequency a little annoying. Yeah, and of course this is because I have the EQ engaged, but even if I turn it off, I still can hear that little uh, frequency. So what I'm going to do now is to attenuate this, but you know you have to do this around 3 dBs, and that's it. Let's try it. 
Okay, I think that's better. But now we need to make this curve a little wider because this will make our sound more natural. Uh, if you use very narrow filters, it may be more noticeable. But if we use a wider band, it will sound more natural. So that's what I want. Let's compare. Okay. And now without EQ. I think that's what I wanted. The next part is I want a little bit of a sparkle, yeah, a little high gain. As we can see, there is a natural roll off above 10 kilohertz, and that's normal. But for professional recordings, sometimes you hear brighter cymbals. So in this case, I need some sparkle. But a good technique for this is to use a different equalizer for the job. In this case, I'm using this digital EQ to cut frequencies and to clean my, my overheads. But then I'm going to use another EQ. In this case, I'm going to use this one. This is a vintage EQ which emulates a graphic equalizer from an API console. These API mixers are renowned for its warm analog sound. So I'm going to use this equalizer and here I'm going to boost a little bit uh, around the sparkle frequencies, which is around 15, 16K. So here I'm going to add just a bit, you know, maybe two, three dBs, something like that. So let's try it. Okay, compare. All right. You'd need to use good headphones for this or good monitors to hear the difference, but it's subtle, but it's there. All right. Yeah, yeah. Now I have to compensate the output because I don't want a race in volume. I just want a different color. So let's try now. So the volume is pretty much the same, but the color is different. That's what I want. All right. And now the big test. We have to check this with a whole drum kit because it doesn't make any sense to have your track sounding great in solo, but you need to hear with the whole context. So, all right, let's bypass it. All right. There it is, it sounds, it sounds good. Let's try it here. Let's compare without any EQ first. Okay, now let's activate it. All right, I think you can hear the difference of that sparkle in the snare drum. Right. So I can fine tune this maybe just a little more. There's no extra processing here. We are just using equalizers. We don't have uh, compressors nor anything else. So it's just the beginning of the process, but we can see that it sounds pretty good. It's not annoying and it's a little brighter. So that's the idea. If possible, you can use one kind of equalizer, a digital one, to clean up your audio, remove the low end and maybe some annoying frequencies in the mid-range, and then to use an analog EQ or an emulation to add some harmonics and give this uh, the characteristic brighter sound of professional recordings.